the idea here in this project that we are dealing with two different things. Uh, the first one is dealing with um, where to put um, the fast charging station, uh, where to locate them, what's the size of them, and basically to study the technical economical placement of these units such that the impact on the distribution system will be minimum. So that's the first topic that we're talking about, the, the considering. Uh, and then we looked at the charging inside the house, so we're looking at the fast charging uh, stations, and then the charging inside the house, so we're looking at the impact of plug-in hybrid electric vehicle on the residential distribution network. So this is basically the boundary of the, the study that we are doing. Um, I'm going to go and, uh, and this things here, just give you the highlights uh, of what we're doing. And um, I think the, the two students are here. They can raise their hand. Um, yes, sir, I'm Muhammad. So if you uh, want to have any uh, detailed discussion with them, because I have to leave for another lecture uh, in, in 10, 15 minutes. So um, the main purpose that we are doing here in, uh, in this one is to manage the risk of the environmental, uh, uh, sorry, of the investment of the fast charging unit by considering some key parameters. And um, the key parameters will actually address, be addressed by technical evaluation. We're doing also service evaluation and economical evaluation on the, on the topic. So the whole idea in, um, in this uh, study has been uh, objective. First of all, we want to look at all the different uh, regulation standards that have been um, uh, now implemented around the world, so that was the, the starting point. And then we looked at uh, investigating the fast charging station infrastructure, so we looked at the different infrastructure uh, of the fast charging station. And then we um, did a forecasting model. So basically all our forecasting here were based on some stochastic analysis, um, um, based on the state of the charge, um, the driving, travel distances, and all of these things. So based on this forecasting model, that uh, we, we developed for, for this one, we tried to find the optimum location and size. And the optimum location and size, basically, we looked at it um, from the grid. We looked at the grid and uh, configuration itself. And then we introduced two things. We introduced if the grid is going to stay the way uh, it is now, or if the grid is going to be supported by ESS or supported by distributed energy. This is. Um, 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 basically, if they have storage or if they have distributed generation, what's the impact also of these two units or these two uh, components on the, the location and the size of our, of our uh, fast charging station? So that uh, was the analytical study that we did here. And uh, basically, we looked at also at uh, investigating the impact of the DG on the performance um, of the combination uh, of these three. And we looked at, from the point of view, if we, the whole system now becomes smart and they are started communicating with each other um, uh, and how this thing is going to be included in the smart grid concept. So the whole idea was to look at um, the sizing and the location of uh, these uh, charging, fast charging station and the impact on the system. The second study that we did, we were trying to, um, to see the, the, if everybody is going to charge at night and if everyone is going to drive his car and after driving his car is going to go home and start charging his car. How this is going to impact our distribution system? As I said in the beginning of this uh, session in the morning, I said one thing that we noticed that uh, a lot of our infrastructure are going to be stressed and going to be stressed uh, to very high uh, point, especially if the penetration of the electric cars increased. Uh, the first study that we did, we looked at, I think, 400, was about 400,000 cars that we... Uh, did. Yeah, uh, these are the data that, that we started with. We looked at the, their driving uh, habit, the, the way that they drive, the, uh, the different type of cars, and from these type of um, statistical analysis that we did on them, we mapped um, 
where are the most location that you're gonna get, where are the, uh, the concentration that you're gonna be. And based on this, we also estimated how much uh, capacity of their battery is gonna be when they reach uh, the home and how long will it take them to charge. The whole idea of these things is to make sure that we don't lose the diversity that we have in our system when we build the, trans the distribution system. All of us know that when we build the distribution system, if we have a handed home, each one is 10 kilowatt, uh, we don't put a transformer with uh, one, uh, 1,000 kVA. Uh, we all know that. So we know that uh, this 10 kilowatt can go down to two or one when we diversify. So the transformer that operates or um, connect to all these loads has a lot of diversity in it. The cable has a lot of diversity in it. Uh, that's the principle that we operate on. The problem that when you have all this electric vehicle charging at the same time, then you're gonna lose that advantage. The second thing is you're gonna lose the advantage of cooling off the transformer too. So our transformer that they are working um, peak of the day, when they go at night, they actually cool off. Uh, this is a cooling cycle for them. That's why our transformer is staying 30 and 40 and 50 years. Now, if you keep loading them in the morning and then loading them at night, then you lose that feature too. Then there is a lot of stresses on the, in the equipment. And one of the things that we try to look at it here is, what, where are the bottlenecks? What are the infrastructures that we need to look at? Is it the distribution of the server? Is it the, the feeders that goes to the houses or the, the secondary feeders that we're looking about? It? Is it the secondaries? Is it the, which part of the network that is the, the, that's gonna be maximum affected by, by this uh, uh, charging? So uh, we did all of this um, uh, calculation to uh, come up with these details. I think uh, Mohammed went to, I think, 40 of, 40 different part of the system that he identified, and he looked at the impact on each one of these system. We took one of the uh, feeder in, um, one of the utility in, in, uh, in Ontario, system. Uh, TV system. 123, yeah. And we tested these things on it. Uh, we have uh, basically looked at uh, the home arrival time, the vehicle daily mileage, and then after that we, we looked at different uncertainties of charging processes and all of these things. The, the other thing that we looked at it too, we looked at if the people have PV uh, on the rooftop, how this is going to affect the charging uh, or the, the impact on the system. Uh, we looked at if there is um, a DG system uh, that's there, how this is gonna affect the system too. Um, so we looked at all these different things and we tried, to, uh, we tried at the end to come to some conclusion and um, we definitely, at least for that system, we know that there's some, uh, at certain level of penetration of electric vehicle, we're gonna have to replace some of this transformer. Uh, there's also, uh, the study shows also that um, if the PV, uh, is being introduced to the system, it's going to ease up the problem a little bit. One of the um, outcome of this research is we decided to look outside the box. We say, okay, if our load is going to be uh, a DC, and if our source is going to be a DC too, like we have a PV which is DC, we have a load which is DC, why don't we think about a DC system beside our AC system? So that also uh, start to um, be part of our study here, is thinking about if we're gonna reinforce the system, we call it reinforcing the system. So if you're gonna reinforce the system, why don't we think of something beyond that what we traditionally do? Uh, can we reinforce the system with another, another DC network that will help in that? And that's part of the study that we're doing. What are the best uh, configuration of a combined AC-DC network that can support the system here. So uh, basically that's what uh, I wanna uh, say. This is a, a different aspect. We looked at all the, uh, assessing the impact of the PHEV on the solution system performance. Uh, we looked at it in terms of unbalanced loading of the secondary distribution of SOMER, number of operation of voltage regulators, voltage at different distribution system levels along the main feeder, uh, across the secondary distribution transformer and at the meters, and then we looked at the total system losses, and we, we looked at all these different aspects of the system. Uh, the analysis showed that the secondary distribution transformers are the bottlenecks uh, 
blocking the widespread uh, adaptation of the uh, BHEV. Uh, uncontrol of BHEV can also uh, be determined on these transformers. We give some examples on how many of our transformer at what level could be changed, but that's very much uh, will be system dependent. Uh, the, uh, basically, this is a kind of uh, results that we get from uh, our study. Okay, um, I'm going to stop here and um, please ask question if you want. And is the students also are available to answer any specific details of the analysis? And uh, that's basically what we're trying to do. Look at the system. Look at um, effect of electric vehicle charging on the network itself and the performance of the network. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions for Dr. Mehdi Salama? I think from my perspective, the modeling is, uh, is probably what's very important to us. And I don't know how dynamic your modeling is. That's always one of the issues you run into is, is trying to get something that's somewhat dynamic. Um, okay. Is there a means or is there a way of looking at it to say, not only are we charging the vehicle, but my air conditioner is coming on at the same time? Yeah. Or not only am I charging the vehicle, but the furnace has come on at the same yeah. time? The, the first part of this study, I'll, I'll let uh, Hamad down uh, Hamad, uh, okay, or something. Do you have another paper about like, Part of this topic, the first paper talked about the dynamic modeling for the elect existing electrical loads, and the second paper is talking about the dynamic modeling for PV systems. So we have dynamic models for this. Like I'm not going to go into much details, but the model started by using historical data, yeah. and then we applied some statistical analysis, clustering algorithms, and we introduced. Like at the end, we were able to find some kind of probabilistic dynamic representation for existing loads and for uh, PV system. These two papers are published, one of them IEEE general meeting, and the second one is published in another conference in MEPCON. So they are available. We can, so the first part was the modeling of the load. Yeah. So we did, and we did it stochastically too. So we have to deal with everything stochastically. So the first one was the load modeling. And then and we have three statistical models here, model <coughs> for PVs, model for loads, and model for plug-in vehicle charging demand. And our benchmark includes these three models. So first, we implemented these models separately, and then we incorporated them all together. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Yes, sir. So will your research, um, uh, as a result, come up with an optimal charging you know, profile for, for EVs at all? Like, what's the, you, you'll identify the problem, which I think doesn't surprise me at all. The, that the transformers are the weak point. Yeah. We're proving it. We, we're proving it. That's all. <laughs> so, um, will the research continue to uh, forward them to develop while well, this would be the optimal charging? Yeah. Assuming they're level two chargers. And yeah, I, I think that's basically what Yasser is trying to do. Yasser is. Um, that will minim minimize the impact on Exactly. The it's it's to take it. Not just the charger, but the impact on the grid. Yeah. Yeah. Like yes, that, that will be the eventually that the, the, the question that you, 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 that I will say I, we're not going to do it is how to make these things be forced enforced. The enforcement of it we haven't got into it yet. Yeah. So how to make that this car only take the three hours and then stop after that, or this one take the two hours and stop after that? We haven't got to that level yet. Sure. But yeah. but we can we we can optimize. We know. Uh, that this area should be, that's the maximum, or that's the best profile for this area, that's the best profile for this area. But how to um, enable that type of profile on that uh, particular part, I think uh, Ahab is working on that, on that part of enabling it and like on the from system. From our perspective, I think what, what I <coughs> hope we can do is map the locations of these chargers, just like we do fit and microfit installations. Yep distribution system. We know where they all are, we know what size they are, and we know what type they are, they're PV or whatever. 
So from my perspective, when it comes to these chargers, I hope we can do the same thing. We can map yeah. these chargers and you know, that there would be an optimal profile if you had four of these connected to a transformer or two or six or whatever yep. it is. And, and once you get more than a certain penetration, you're probably going to have to upgrade the transformer. Yes, I, I think that's exactly what he's... When I first came to that research, my first like, my first concern was to identify the problem. Sure. Thinking yeah, you got to start with that. Yeah. yeah, so I identify the problem now with second distribution transformers, either are kind of are going to be okay with until high penetration. Right. So the next step we are trying to do to implement solutions. Yes, it is implementing some kind of solution like the optimal sizing and allocation yes. of charging station. And uh, maybe we can go into the chronological uh, charging scheme of existing plug-in vehicles in the system. For myself, I'm going for kind of untraditional solutions. I'm just exploring them like when we place like if the house has a PV and plug-in vehicle at the same time. Is going to make the problem worse, or is going to solve right. it? Right. If we're going to implement storage device, if we're going to implement VC system, so we are identifying the problem, and then we are looking at traditional and untraditional solutions for the problem. Okay. Uh, uh, the only other comment I would have is the optimum location of chargers. I'm not sure. What? Uh, uh, charging station. Charging station. station. I'm not sure that that's really relevant because it's really what's optimal for the customer. Uh, for the well, uh, I, I would just want to comment on that one. It's like when you do uh, optimum uh, planning. Uh, yeah. we, we start with some what we call um, candidate sites. Usually our, our job is to work from the candidate sites. That could be, you know, like proposed based on many other things. Uh, municipality, um, 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 sure. structure, uh, utility preference, customer uh, preference. And out of these six or seven or eight or 10 that you propose for us, then the question is, out of this 10, what would be the best, say, four or five that we can work with now? We're not gonna start from absolute scratch. Like, we're not gonna say, let's have this place put your charger there. Because I believe that if I start from only technical point, of selecting the place that were going to be the worst place. Yeah. And I agree, because we, we did a lot of economical, we call it economical analysis and all of these things. And there's a lot of factors that has to be introduced. Our job is to look from the six or seven or whatever or 10 that will be identified as a candidate sites. And out of these candidate sites, what will be the best ones and what will be the size of these candidate sites that fit, that will not harm our network because there's a lot of other things that he's working at. He's working at the power quality too. That's a big issue. Yeah. Uh, power quality is the big issue when you have, um, a, a, especially when you're talking about uh, uh, level two charging. Yeah. So uh, how this going to impact, especially for utility, especially if somebody now is, is the, the reliability index is something that you guys are, are worried about. So for SAC swells and interruptions and how many interruptions, what, what are the ratio of interruption. So we are trying to introduce all of these factors inside our decision making uh, part of it. That's so what that's data loggers will, will help us start to see where the patterns are. Yeah. Because my concern is in a lot of cases I agree with the transformer, but if a clustering takes place in some of the older areas where the people that are generally in those areas are more environmentally thinking about things. So if you start to cluster in your old areas where you have number four, number six copper, and you you just don't have the load carrying capability on those old wires, you're gonna have Trouble won't be that, it'll be the primary conductor. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Very Thank you. Okay. I'll just take my. Uh